So the manhunt is over, but there's still plenty of questions here. What could the motive have been? Why did the two suspects drive to northern Manitoba? And why did it take so long to track them down? And even though this case is no longer going to be before the courts, we still got very little information today from the RCMP. So let's go in-depth with a former major crimes investigator, Steve Marisink. He's also the founding director of Elmar Group, a private investigative agency, and he joins us from Edmonton. Steve, I want to ask you to draw on your experience as an investigator, and let's start with the things that, that we know here. First of all, the escape path for these two suspects to rural Manitoba and then the woods. What does that tell you about them? My first thought when I heard about that is that the two of them got in the vehicle and began traveling east, uh, trying to stay to back roads, staying off the main highways, but still traveling east. I'm not sure they had a destination in mind. Uh, I, I noted when I looked uh, on the map that the road where they were found, where they burned the last vehicle, was a dead end at the Nelson River. And I, I, I would be surprised if that was by intent. In other words, something, they just ended up where they ended up, and, and then they, of course, at the very end, were, were in some thick woods. And you had suggested when we last talked, I think it was probably a week ago, you pretty well at that point thought that they were dead. I, I did, and, and that was because... Uh, there had been no contact with them, and, and that was odd. And uh, it, it was strange. It was out of the ordinary, other than they had encountered misadventure of some kind. We know that they burned, or it appears that they burned two vehicles, one in British Columbia and one near Gillam, Manitoba. What does that tell you? I, my first thought on that, again, Ian, is that they're looking to destroy evidence. Uh, everybody watches TV. Everybody knows what forensics can do. And by burning the vehicles, uh, they believe that they can eliminate any trace evidence that uh, they may have uh, transferred between themselves that would link them to the crimes. Now, in terms of evidence, the RCMP saying today that there is evidence that links these suspects to those two murder scenes, uh, the couple, first of all, and then the individual, Leonard Dick, but they still don't appear to know the motive. And so, again, as someone who's a veteran investigator, a case like this, murdering a couple, murdering an individual person, and then apparently they're not suspected in any other murders. What do you make of that? Well, it was interesting. They, I believe it was the deputy commissioner who indicated there was substantial evidence linking them to the, the scene of the, the, the young couple, uh, which was an interesting comment. Uh, my thought, again, when I first heard of this, is that it was a random act. The, the vehicle was broken down at the side of the road, and, and for whatever reason uh, that we may never determine, uh, those two stopped uh, and they had an interaction and the, the scene at there would probably provide a lot of information in terms of, of what the uh, what the scene would look like in terms of how it transpired but we wouldn't know that motivation and, and that might be something they will never know and uh, you were a member of the Mounties for years uh, how do you feel your old police force conducted itself during this investigation well, the most challenging aspect of any homicide, when it's a stranger homicide in terms of there's no, no one link between the offenders and, and the victims, is to identify suspects. And, and I was actually uh, very pleased to hear that within a, a relatively short period of time, they had linked the, the three homicides in B.C. and identified two suspects. So kudos to them for doing that. Uh, and from that point, it's a matter of, of following uh, the route and tracking them as they can uh, through the methods they had available to them. All three prairie provinces were on the alert to look for these individuals and they, they surfaced as they would. All right, Steve Marisink in Edmonton, always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you.